I'm Aaron Lambo. You might remember me from such films as Fuck the Police. Or the Lambo movie, which is available from bornalpha.co.uk, now mentalhamster.com. Harry, see what I did there? <coughs> um, normally, we do our own podcasts, which have um, more views. But what we're doing is we've decided to help out Beef Magazine TV and uh, promote them and promote ourselves. So Simon's going to ask us some questions. We've got a has-been that's never been, Lee Priest. Thank right you. There, Lee. All right. We've got Lainey, some Roy Dead here Lainey. called Lainey. Dean Laziak. Right. Did I get my roids from you? And we've got Simon Fan. <laughs> Simon Fan is the owner of. Uh, what show is your owner? Not, tro- not, not Temple. What was it? <laughs> Ultimate Fitness. Ultimate Fitness, that's right. Ultimate Fitness, Birmingham. So, Simon, over to you. Birmingham. Right, um, well, we're all here today at your new premises. Can you tell us a bit about Actually, this? it's not new. It's been here over a year. You just haven't fucking come to say hello. <laughs> I wonder I'll why today. Uh, yeah, I know. Oh, he's come here today. He just happened to have to be lights and microphones and that. But hey, well, he, knew I was, he knew I was here. So, so what yeah, the, he we're here at our old premises. Oh, we can yeah, see Lee Priest actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. heard a decent bodybuilder was in town. <coughs> <laughs> right, so tell us about um, your new venture. What your plans are? Body power. I'm going to own the fucking world. <laughs> I, I, can tell you I can tell you something good about this place. Your fucking cap, cap matches my watch. Is it? The oh, cheap fucking good and shit. Good. <laughs> That's a good match. Swallowclock.com used it. <coughs> Lee Priest. We've, um, we decided to do a rebrand of, um, of the company for Body Power, and I decided to get this cunt here over with Samir Banut. Um, Samir's gone home now, so now I'm stuck still with this cunt here until the 22nd or 23rd. So we're going to keep ourselves occupied. We went to see Warwick Castle yesterday, didn't we? And then we're going to go to London. I went, a theme park. I went shooting today. Went shooting today, yeah. Oh, I had a loaded gun out. That fucking didn't really go wrong. <sighs> Why is everything you touch go wrong? Is well, it, it doesn't, but you imagine being near me with a loaded hard. gun, you, well, it's going to go wrong, isn't it? Well, yeah, because... And that's what's been happening, really. So, we're just um, prodding along, taking the piss out of the industry, taking the bullshit and the, the gimmicks out, and we're just... I don't know, just doing everyday stuff and, and fucking around, no different to us. People need to realise, in this industry, it's too fucking serious. There's too many... T- is that why you called it mental hamster? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a, a dickhead fucking um, ex-business partner that thought he'd try and blackmail me over the fucking name. Oh, here we go. You can never get over it. <coughs> and I thought, well, we don't need a, a bird sticking our ass out just to sell our fucking products. We, 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 if our products are good enough, we can call it anything. Mental hamster, and we can have more fun with it. And it's funny how we um, <laughs> brought a hamster to body power and fucking took over even still. So tell us about the uh, famous microphone incident in body power. What happened? Oh, that... Okay, let's go to the other Think about this stuff! Oh, you tell me what happened. What was the rumours? Well, I just in a video, you've thrown a microphone just into the crowd. <laughs> it was more of a drop. <laughs> <laughs> was you there, Lee? You were there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What, what happened? The mic, first the two speakers up front were working. <coughs> when the guy was on, when the guy who was conducting it talked that was working, every time he handed the mic to us, they went off. He handed it to me, went off. Aaron, it went off. I'd be on for a second, it went off. This went on and on. The fans were there waiting for the questions and answers. We left, didn't we? We were there for about at least, we got 15 minutes to try and get it working, and then it didn't work, so we left. So that then they all came back over to line up at the trailer. We got it working now, so we said, OK, we'll go back. We go back, so all the fans come back over there. We start again, another 15 minutes, same shit. Was, was it even on your stun, was it? No. no. So the mic kept going off, kept going off. So after Aaron just said, oh, fuck it. And the guy up top who was fucking around with the speakers and the mics, which was meant to be the one fucking controlling it all, he just fucking threw the mic up to him. That's where it landed, simple that as was that. It. That was it. The thing is, the, the way I see it is um, we're not being there to fucking stand there like the zoos in a f- uh, animals in a zoo just to be stared at. And the fans have paid, well, how much is it for a ticket body part? 25, 30 no, 35 quid. quid. 35 quid. So, you know, it's not really fair on them. They have to queue up long enough to see athletes. You know, if you so can't... So you think they did it purposely? I don't know. I don't really care. But... The thing is, if you're charging fans and that fucking 35 quid or whatever it is for a ticket and you haven't even got a sound system that works or a microphone, that's taken the But piss. it did work. It, I, it only didn't work when we were there. As soon as we <coughs> after you started threw working it, again. The, from that day on, from that half, as soon as we left the thing and he started talking again, yeah, the mics worked, work, the speakers worked. But if it didn't work and they're charging people for yeah, that and they, and they haven't got anything that works, that's pretty fucking sad. If it did work and they were doing it on purpose, well, they're fucking stupid then, aren't they? 
So I don't really care whether it did or didn't from well, that day on. A, they didn't have a problem with it. At, we didn't do a seminar, on. did we? We were supposed to do one every day. And I said, no, you fucked it now. I'm not doing it. So we didn't do it. And that was that. So apart from that, it went well. <laughs> well, it, it went really well. I mean, no, it wasn't it, abusive. It didn't go into the crowd. It didn't almost hit a woman or child or fucking no. or whatever. None of that shit. So no, I didn't do that's that. just the dickheads that weren't there talking shit. Yeah. I did hear an interview that uh, you... Lee did with Generation I and do you uh, care to explain what happened there? What, the movie? The one in Brazil. You, uh, I what, what are you on about? No, there's actually it? been two because... Like a TV channel now. When the oh, first right. one came out, I gave my opinion on it, and what's his name? Vlad, who does it. He thought he'd probably call me out and catch me on it, so yes, he dude. sent me a message and says, Lee, will you do a Skype interview with me about the movie? I said, sure I will. So he goes on. First question, Lee, I heard you said my movie was shit. Is this true? I said, yeah, it's fucking shit. <laughs> So I told him to his face it was shit. Because I told him, because you made it sound like it was going to be the next pumping iron, it was crap. The best bit, you know, Branch falling off a horse was funny in the first one, but the other bits of fucking Phil Heath running <coughs> up the fucking mountains like a gazelle up the road doing cardio, fuck off. When does Phil Heath run around this fucking hill up that fucking mountains in Colorado like that? Are you telling me you've never run up a mountain and none of your bodybuilders? He's like, uh, 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 like fucking King Kong coming up the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Who the fuck does that, really? Getting ready for a contest. And then it's like, it's almost like a, it's almost like a fucking steroid version of fucking MTV Cribs with fucking jackasses with muscle. That's what it fucking looked like. They tried to make it, well, nothing like pumping iron. Then the second one come out, and we who we have on that one, Callum and Rich Piana and everything else, and that was fucking even worse. So, so when they come up to me in FIBO, I mean, no, um, Brazil, at the other place they asked me about it, they said it was shit, boring, crap. And they're actually talking to me, they want to come down to Australia and film a bit in it, part three with me in it, so that's why I said that'll be the only good bit in it, so. I don't want to do training in it, they can just sit there and talk to me, but I don't know why they try and, I don't know what they're trying to do with the Generation I and stuff, it's really just shit. I think they're trying to, trying to um, show the insight of a pro bodybuilder's but life, not, but they're not fake. being honest, it's yeah. Fake. Well, there weren't many shit. pro bodybuilders in the last... No, well, yeah, Calvin, one, uh, Rich, I think Kai was on the game, I think, a little bit a little bit of Kai. Yeah, but it's like, it's just, the people in it are trying too hard even. It's like even Callum going down his hallway on his skateboard and shit and he's talking like a fucking Neanderthal and stuff like that. It's just like stupid, you know? Now he's what, hurt himself doing the bicep curl, hurt himself going off a cliff, you know? What's happening with Kai Green now? Because I haven't seen much of him at all. That's a genuine question. He's sort of gone off Nobody the radar. Knows. Uh, what, movies? Yeah, movies, yeah. You stop watching all oh, the yeah. gay porn then. No. Yeah. That's he, right, he was he in that Stranger that Things TV show, had a little part in Stranger Things, and then he's, I saw he was doing that, like a fight scene in some movie, wasn't mm. he? Okay. But he was supposed to be at a body pal this weekend, wasn't he? he what, what, was he not there? Or he no, well, what, what happened? <coughs> he turn up. He's probably filming a Generation Iron movie. Maybe he was stuck in traffic with Dorian, I don't know. Dorian was there. Was he? I saw a photo, yeah. Well, he he um, cancelled a few of his seminars. So did you. It's not like Dorian. So did you, so shut up. No, I had a reason for it. <laughs> his <laughs> bike didn't work. Maybe he had reasons. Yeah. Mm. That's not Maybe his Dorian. bike didn't work either. <laughs> Dorian's nice to me, so shut up. Mm, I don't like him, he's a fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> so Lee, what, what you talking been about a Mr. Olympia here so many times. Oh, yeah. I know, that's, I'm talking about... Don't, don't ask me about Dorian. No, no, let's talk about Dorian. I'm talking about a cunt who's that much of a cunt. He's six-time Mr. Olympia that can't even get fucking £600 for a seminar, whereas you, a fifth Mr. Olympia, and you can get fucking a grander seminar. That's how much of a cunt he is, but hey, you know, it speaks volumes. I'm not one to fucking get involved. He's got a grudge against him, doesn't he? He's got you a grudge against him. But you're over there, Dorian, aren't you? Huh? You're over it, aren't you? Yeah, I'm over here. Mm. I think he must have got lost because he told me that he was going to carve my face off with a knife if he saw me a body part. Oh, fuck, I wished he would. <laughs> he fucking didn't, though, didn't he? Yeah, slit your throat will shut you up. His son <laughs> said he was looking for me with ten people. The cunt ain't got ten friends. How long ago was it? <laughs> Two years ago. How long? <laughs> Two years ago. I hold yeah. a grudge, all right? Let I hold a grudge. Fuck, you know. That, 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 you know, from that movie Frozen, Let It Go, that song should just be on fucking repeat in this place. <laughs> let it go, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> to Lee. Next issue, I think you need Lee, what have you been up to then? You've been travelling? You've been to the travelling you, yeah, um, you went to Fibo last month? I started off a trip in the... I was over at the Arnold Classic in a... <coughs> you know, from the Arnold Classic, I, then I was down at Fibo in Germany for a week and a bit. Then I went from straight from Germany down to the Arnold Classic in Brazil for a week That's and a bit. That's with um, Black School. Yeah. Yeah, you sponsored. Then I was back from there, back home for five days, and then over to here. 
busy, busy. And that's it for a while. Yeah, and then I think September I'll be going to the Olympia. And then back to... Are you allowed? Are you allowed yes, into Olympia? Yes, yeah. allowed in. And then I'll be going from there to Black Skull sponsoring the Olympia in um, Brazil again. So I'll be down there for that. I took that new flight yeah, actually coming here, 17 oh, hours non-stop from oh, the London. Come on, 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 Oh, you two be serious down there. <laughs> Sorry, man, Oh, Jesus. So how did you find body power this year? Well, you, uh, look, I'm one of those people, I give anyone credit for training, changing their life, changing their physique, wanting to look good, but I do not understand the fucking knobs that walk around with their shirts off. Fuck me dead. They think they look that good. They've even got to put their fucking exhibitor pass around the yeah, other way because... Yeah, they lanyards on their back yeah. now walking around. Because that could cover their abs up a bit. And then they've got that gym little set up there. They go in there and train with their tops off. Pump up walk around. Yeah, I'm like, who the fuck does that? I'm like, you look yeah, back in the old days... what it was for? For them to pump up so they can keep walking around? I don't know what it's for, but who walks around an expert with their fucking shoes wow, off? Wow, is that Did really you ever see any of the top pro bodybuilders do that? Look, if you're got a good physique. People are going to notice it in a nice top, in a fucking tank top even, but they have no fucking shirt on. You're just a fucking knob. Simple as that. It's like, did you saw him, didn't you? You see him walking around? I'm sure Dean's seen him walking around. You just think, oh yeah, that's how Dorian, Paul Dillette, Chris Cormier, and we all walked around exposed like that. No, we didn't. You're a fucking knob. Oh, well, you guys didn't need to, did you? Mm -hmm. huh? You didn't need to, though, did you? You, you, you're like, yeah. If you're a bodybuilder, you can, you, you you can tell the person yeah. a bodybuilder with a fucking... But even a guy who's got a nice physique who's not a bodybuilder, if you just got, you know, a nice mm. classic physique, you can still see it. Mm. And I'm sure if they were, had a nice top on or dressed in a tank top even or whatever, you'd respect them all. But walking around the shirt off, it's almost like, hey, look at me, look at me type shit. It's like... But nowadays you get people training just for body power, just to walk around. Oh, you get it's fashionable, you know, it's not like it was a lifestyle. They, prep, they, prep, they must do like a peak week before body power. Do they think they're going to like be discovered? Someone's going to see them and go, wow, look at you. You're <laughs> you know what, I genuinely believe that. that. They, they look yeah. like sponsorship or something. Yeah. Like, if you can see all, all 12 pairs of my ribs sticking out, then you might But if I saw on. someone walking around, then I'd think you're a fucking knob and an idiot and I wouldn't sponsor you, you know, because you're just like a big fucking cock. <laughs> So yeah, but and then when they do want pictures with you, they fucking cut the circulation off to your hand, they're tensing that fucking hard. Yeah, freaking. <laughs> 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 well, apart from that, it seemed good. Like I said, there was a lot of people there. And yeah, people always get upset there's not many bodybuilders here, but a lot of the expos are going more towards that fitnessy mm. type stuff and things like that. So bodybuilding seems to be changing now compared to what it used to be. And a lot of promoters are going where the money is, and that's with the figure, classic physiques, and all these other new classes they're coming out with. With no new class, I saw... Um, uh, where yep, they're fucking the dressed, didn't they? Yeah, there's the street classes wear. where they're in Omni yeah, dresses, there's going yeah, out where tuxedo yeah. class now. Yeah, there's a street wear one. So, in what basically where you cover up? You can like compete well, like that, you can just change a t shirt. What for No FBB. No, not FBB, it's um, was it the PCA or something or one of those? No, nah, it wouldn't be. What they did? No, PCA. ICN, yeah, do ICN or there's a couple. Yeah. Know which one, but they had them on stage and they had the streetwear class on, just guys in jeans and t-shirts. I would have won that class. <laughs> <laughs> that, all that all kicked off. What? All that built-in stuff. When did that, that all kicked off when Lee came to yeah, my gym, didn't first come over. Yeah, yeah, four years ago. I didn't even know Bill, it's just that he just had this problem calling up Jim saying if he... So should, we, should we talk about that, what happened? Well, well you, you kindly went and got Lee a t-shirt of Ultimate Fitness on it with Lee Priest on the back. And I kindly sent it over to Bill too. Mm. After he threatened you not to have Lee. Yeah, but what you arranged for Lee to come to my gym. Listen, I, I fucking sold that tour yeah. 18 gyms well before Lee even come over. So if he ever had a problem with it or anything, he could have discussed it with me yeah. before. Yeah. Didn't. He waited until Lee was over, until we were mid tour, oh, about three or four days into the tour, Lee. I yeah. got a phone call to say that Bill Teeny was um, ringing up Jim saying that if you have Lee in your gym, then. Um, your, your athletes are competing. And sure that's all just because I was a suspended up. athlete. Mm. Yeah. And so then when I said to Bill, I rang him up and I said to him, listen, let me tell you about my business and I explained all these three athletes from different federations. He kicked up me off and he said, had, had. I said, what do you mean had? And he said, had a business. And I was when I lost my temper and he called his missus a prostitute and it all went from there. And basically, because I know you three guys, I was, I never got banned. Then, then I got banned. No, that was because you went out to dinner with us oh, and you got that yeah, text message, didn't you? I posted a picture of, post of, picture. of us on yeah. social media. To me, that's just bullshit. Yeah. To me, how how dare I post my private life? You've got a gym, you can have who you want the gym. Okay, say I'm suspended IFBB. Okay, I'm nothing. I'm just a bodybuilder. But you can have a type of person in your gym, you can have anyone in your gym give a seminar and talk, but because it's Lee Priest, what, oh, you can't have him? as like, why? <laughs> and then they rang me from, um, I think it was Colorado or, or Denver, saying, um, uh, if you 
distance yourself from Lee and who was it Raph it was Raphael oh. um, Neil Hill he flew over there um, and who was the what one of you lot Robin Chan Robin Chan there was all three of them they rung me and they said uh, if you distance yourself from Lee Priest then um, and write an official apology to Bill Tini and then Neil was on loudspeaker he went I'll even write it for you and pay a sanction fee then you, well, you'll be invited back to the IFB and you can use different athletes that's why I told them to go fuck themselves and then I rung you straight after them and I told them mm-hmm. what they said <coughs> and it did it fucked me up for about a year all of a sudden people didn't want to fucking speak to me and was distancing myself from me I and still don't want it athletes, but, still don't. but then all of a sudden do my own thing and then social media takes over it's funny how they all want to fucking train you now I don't <laughs> don't I just think it's a lot of crap when they go on like that you shouldn't be able to stop anyone doing anything but I would like to take credit because if it wasn't for me doing that the PCA would <laughs> fucking be here I fucking started all that ah. I fucking I think... started all of that now, you lot can say what you fucking want to say, <laughs> but nobody had the bollocks to fucking go like I did on the UK yeah, BFF. Yeah, no one. I fucking started that. If I didn't do that, you wouldn't have Lisa Gelsey, Mike Gelsey leaving. You, not, you lot wouldn't have left. James wouldn't have left. I was kicked out. I was in the leave. Because of me. That's what some started that. Yeah, really. So, if it's him, it really comes back to me. Because I was the one yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was Lisa. Up, so. So I started with the I, I, I started with the IFBB started. <laughs> I started with the IFBB in the States and then I just brought it with me. I finished what you started and I just fucking went all out. It comes back to me yeah. and Simon, so, doesn't it? Great. You ruined our lives between yeah. us. Yeah. Oh, were you saying you were happy with the UK BFF? Yeah, I was more than happy. Well, were you I happy? loved it. Uh, or losing losing like two hundred pound, no, not really. Yeah. I, I love putting two, three grand into every show and being fourteen yeah, years of my grand. life. Not the seminar that I fucking watched with Neil Hill, it was him. <laughs> Just saying, yeah. that's what I fucking heard with my own ears. Just saying. <laughs> Someone's what's lying. What's the next question? Throw that out there. <laughs> Be what's your plans for Ultimate Fitness? You can have a chain of them around the country. Because <laughs> you've owned gyms all your life, really. Yeah. Nah, no, no, no plans. No plans for other gyms. Just, just stick to the one. It's, I think if you spread out too thin, then one business is going to suffer. So I'm happy with... Um, one gym's enough for me. Just keep making it better and better. We're going to start our own uh, channel, the YouTube channel, fitness channel, which we started uh, the weekend. We had obviously Flex with um, loads of athletes. So, yeah. Ulysses. Ulysses, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what's going on. So he's, Lee, Lee watches that channel. He's a subscriber. He's on it every day. What are you going to do with your life, Dave? Um, so you're not competing again? So, uh, I don't know. I'm not, never saying never. <coughs> I'm not saying I won't compete again, but at this moment right now, I'm just being healthy and enjoying training. Got no plans at, at the minute to do any show. Maybe next year, we're uh, looking to do another PCA or something. you enjoy the No, not one bit. <laughs> Sorry, really, there's no point in doing it. No, I did. To be honest, I always use competing as a way to keep me training hard and pushing forward. I, I love training. Even the diet, when you get yourself into condition, the whole process, it's, it's a hard challenge. But the actual get on stage in little pants, oiled up, that look at me. Same. I hate it. Always hate it. Mm. it. Let's it's ask some fucking not me. questions then while you're all there. We'll, let's, let's see the basic things that you see on the, on the uh, Facebook groups and what the, the, the main statuses are um, from the so-called gurus. Because we've already had a conversation about this on the other podcast. <coughs> um, macros. Do you count your macros? Do I count my macros? If I'm, I'll, I'll weigh the first couple of minutes and then I guesstimate it. I know exactly what I'm eating. I eat the same so thing the every then. day. I, do, I don't no. count macros. Do I keep my body what I need. What now? No, just in general. Is <laughs> no. there any purpose for it? What I'm trying to say is there's a lot of fucking stigma that, that mm. the young kids that are reading magazines. Let's be honest. We know Lee. We know Flex Reedy. We know some others. We all know that most of them don't actually write the, the, the shit that's in the magazines. The magazine yeah. writing is bullshit. That's if if I'm into it. dieting hard for a show, <coughs> then you, your food has to be the same, basically. If you're eating the same thing every day, then you know what to change at the end of the week. Well, your body but, will change if you eat the same time, same food. Yeah, of day. course. If your food's up and down all the time, your body don't know what it's doing. So you, you have to be eating the same foods, but I don't, I don't go out of the way to count every fucking gram of everything that I'm eating. I just go by how I feel and how I look. Well, let's the go fat's coming the off. The next fucking one, which I'll let Lee answer. Another one is, I've heard, uh, well, we both heard a, um, a saying called the dirty bulk. Hmm. Can you explain that? No idea. Bulking up is bulking up. You're gonna, you want to get big and put weight on, you just eat. 
I guess their version of a dirty bulk is McDonald's, Kentucky, and just eating bad foods. But that's a clean bulk for us, isn't it? No, but when I when I when I'd be off season, I'd have bulk. I'd have steak and rice and vegetables. But then <coughs> an hour later, if I was past McDonald's, I'd eat some McDonald's, and then mm -hmm. I might have chicken and potatoes. And then an hour later, if I'm passing Kentucky, I'd eat Kentucky. It's just like I just eat extra extra food. Yeah, it's just extra food, no matter what it is. It doesn't have to be good or bad. So this whole dirty bulk, clean bulk, and <coughs> excuse me, when I say clean bulk, I'm thinking. Yeah, if you're going to eat clean food, you've got to eat a lot of clean food to bulk up on that so stuff. Does that mean so taking the, uh, the buns away when you're eating the burger? The exactly clean bulk? Taking the skin off the yeah. chicken, but that's just stupid. Like, I know people say, I want to get bulk up, and, but I still want to keep my abs and get stay lean, and it's like, it's not going to happen. Mm. It's like, you've got to put a little bit of fat on, a little bit of body fat, a little bit of fluid, you know, and you'll be stronger for it. But these days, I think, you know, everyone wants to try to keep their abs with their jawline and look all pretty, so it's just... Just ridiculous. Half of it too comes from, like you said, on the internet. All these gurus who don't know nothing, or just people that sit there, some skinny little leafy open who's got abs. It's like you know, anyone can have abs for fuck's sake. They grow some arms and legs and something. So any skinny person, 60, 70 pounds, can have abs on them. So do you, do you think they overcomplicate things they and do. miss they're out trying, on the basics? Too scientific. Mm, you look at bodybuilding. You want to get big, eat, eat a lot of food, yeah, train heavy. Uh, bodybuilding is not rocket recipe. science. You want to get in contest shape or lean, or <laughs> eat clean they're, food. They're trying to, to make up the next new thing to get money from you. Yeah, it is, just, just just people do. don't want to hear simple, do they? No. But you, you know. well, I actually used to do dice for people. I want to give them like, oh, that's pretty basic. I'm like, well, what do you want? I'm going to give it to you, make it easy for you, make it. Basically, because that's what you got to do. That's said, what works. Yeah. Anyway, I gave a guy this. He won the drug program. I said, look, I don't know much about drugs. This is what I've done. He looks at it. He goes, are you fucking with me? That's not enough. I said, why not? I said, that's what I've used. It worked for me. Why won't it work for you? Well, I've read you got to have a thousand of this and a thousand of that. Oh, whatever. It's just like... Yeah, People don't want to hear it, do they? You need to realise um, that bodybuilding isn't fucking that scientific it's basic and all people are doing is taking your money off you you need to um, come to understand and accept whether you like it or not it all comes down to genetics you either have genetics or you don't you either have genetics to be a great pro maybe you could be a great amateur maybe you're not even going to be a great amateur maybe you can just get your physique to the best it can fucking be but everybody is different that is why we are humans I remember you said uh, once in a seminar, Lee, um, our sport is the only fucking sport in the world where people can do it for a few months and think that they can compete with the fucking well, best. Do, you don't get people well, playing golf on the weekend. Yeah, I've got friends who do play Hood golf on the weekend well. or play tennis, but they do it for fun. They might be good at it, but they don't say, well, well, I'm going to go play Roger Federer in a year or two, I'm going to win these big <coughs> things. But it seems like every guy that goes into the gym and sticks a needle in his arm, I'm going to be a pro bodybuilder. I'm going to like, no, you're not. And it's like Aaron said. There are a lot of guys. To be a pro bodybuilder on the Olympia stage, you're talking about a top one percent. Mm. Like I said before, there's probably, you go around the world, there's probably thousands, millions of people that can run fucking fast, but, but, but to be a Hussein Bolt or a Carl Lewis or someone, you're talking about a, an upper echelon there, and it's no that, matter what that drug that you take, you ain't going to get up it there. It takes years, doesn't it? It takes yeah, 10, 15. It doesn't matter what people say. They can say, listen, you know, if I took a thousand pounds worth of steroids a month, I'd look like you. If I took this, I'd look like you. It comes down to genetics. You either have good arms, you either have shit calves, you can have good quads, you can have I good... Think, I think hard work beats genetics, mm -hmm. but when Every you've time. got genetics and hard work, it's came over. I've seen, yeah. seen guys exactly. who don't have great genetics, but they they do bust their ass. Added drugs. You can beat a guy with genetics, but the guy with genetics is yeah. lazier. So it's like, but I said, you can, like I said, only go so far though. Even a guy that doesn't have great genetics, that does hard work, yes, he can still be good and get there, but he's not going to be the best. That's like I said, some yeah. guys only make that top level amateur, maybe never get their pro yeah. card, and some might only ever play for <laughs> um, <coughs> Ronnie Coleman is a perfect example. He's, you see, he's got great genetics, but he smashed it year in, year out, every year. He's, the way he's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's mm. fucked his physique, but he, you ask him, he, he's got no regrets over it. He is what he is. But to be eight times Mr. Olympia, mm -hmm. eight times in, in a, do you know what I mean? That's crazy, isn't it? So when you get that one person who's got the genetics mm -hmm. and he's got the drive, the motivation, exactly. it's, it's game over mm -hmm. for everyone, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like I said, when you've got, it, you've got someone who's got the perfect genetics for bodybuilding and they take a little bit of drugs, you're not going to catch them if you don't have that great genetics. You might get close to them or something like that and yeah. look okay, but you're not going to be the top echelon. Mm -hmm. But yet, sadly, mm -hmm. this people think, well, if I take more, if I take more, I will get there. It's like, you won't, because I'm sure you've seen guys... Uh, I've seen Aaron, Aaron, Aaron took There's every drug in the world yeah. and he got nowhere. Yeah, so yeah, but that's, that's what we're talking about. You can see guys that just bang the drugs in year after year after year compete year after year, after year and they're still knocking on that door mm, yeah. and they're not going to get there but in their mind they think I'm going to get there and 10-15 years later they've just wasted all that time abused their body and it's crazy
And that's I, I really just believe, need to get in touch with reality half the time. I, I really believe you can do anything you, you want to do in life if you've got the drive and you want it that bad. But things like bodybuilding and sports uh -huh. place, you, you've got to be realistic and see. Exactly. You've got to work with what you've got. You can be better and good at anything. Mm -hmm. But to be the best in the world... It's genetic, isn't it? Yeah. And there's the thing that they say, I'm going to be a pro. It's like, how can you say you're going to be a pro? <coughs> you haven't even done a local show yet. Start off small and work your way up, you know. Maybe in five, six years' time, your mindset's going to change and you don't want to do bodybuilding anymore. Yeah, but then you have to lead by example. And unfortunately, people aren't doing that. There is there, there is no main federation anymore. It used to be the IFBB. It used to be NABA. NABA was the main universe. IFBB were the main fucking Olympia. Now you've got WABA doing an Olympia. Now you've got IBFA fucking universe. You can have six or seven fucking British finalists in the UK. Okay, who's the true British? So you really, you, you've got the athletes that are getting the wrong fucking advice. And when they know they can't compete against you, what they do is they go and compete in another federation and, and then try and claim your fucking title. Mm. That's not fucking fair. Yeah, How many well, guys, so many you know. pros now, too. Because I remember when I was young, to see a pro bodybuilder, it was like, wow, he's a yeah. pro. Mm. And then you see someone that come up to me and say, oh, I'm such and such, I compete in, I got a pro card. You're yeah. like, you really? think he, he wouldn't even win a shit amateur yeah, show and you got a pro card. So I, yeah, nothing against them, but because there's so many organizations that are giving out pro cards. Yeah. So it shouldn't be because, like I said, to be a pro, you had to be at the top of the top, you know, the elite. Yeah. And when you saw right. one, you knew they were pro. So I'm sorry if you got to come and tell me you're a pro. Well, there's a problem. I, I well, they got to put I pro do. in their name on everything. It's like if you're putting pro in your you name, pro in your name on, on Facebook. Facebook or something. It's like if you got to tell people you're a pro. Well, yeah. I got a guy they had me on Instagram or whatever bullshit, and he says IFBB pro so and so, and I look at his page and he's like ten stone ringing. And he does his broad short class or whatever, and he looks like he never trained in his life. Mm -hmm. And you go and calling people you're an IFBB pro because they're giving out that many different yeah. classes and all the rest of it. it sounds like Nathan Sylvester. What? <laughs> 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 is it Nathan? <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Sylvester or Nathan? Sylvester. What was his other name? He's just fucking changed his name now as well. Nathan. Who only slagged you off Lee for having a comment on on Generation Iron? I don't know, he talks to my ex a bit, so who knows? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, that's bodybuilders yeah. in this industry, everybody. They uh, fucking leave no, me. He married me in that sort of stuff. I think he's a cunt. Because they're uh, fucking lectures with people's girlfriends. <laughs> Let him near yours and you'll fucking understand why. Maybe it's the girls you go for, because if you had a nice girl, then maybe she wouldn't respond. I, fi I think it's this fucking industry. I think, I think it's going in a different way and you've got pro bodybuilders, like you say, they're having to put pro in a name and they're pretending that they're living this football lifestyle, this multi-millionaire lifestyle, which is giving kids a false hope. These so-called ambassadors that are pretending that they're sponsored with a fucking discount code. It's all bullshit. And when you've got a young 17-year-old lad who's working a basic fucking job, he's getting tied into this, killing himself nearly, injecting all these drugs, thinking that that's the way to go forward for a pro card that they're going to give out in another federation that ain't even a, a good class. What I'm seeing now is a lot of... <coughs> People coming into the gyms with all these new cat mm. six. Mm. Yeah. It takes years. Yeah, even to first show, first show. I mean, there's no one in that yeah. club. I mean, I get their pro card first show. Yeah. And now they're an expert and yeah. trainer. And well, isn't it like anything? If you want to be good at something, you've got to be good at football. You need to be starting at a young age. What age were you when you started training? No, I mean, what age when you started bodybuilding? Building 19. So when you lifted weights, how old were you? 16, yeah. How old were you? 13, started competing. There you go, I was 14. Like a bit of 13. So it says anything, if you want to be good at football, like David Beckham, they did it from a young age. If you want to be good at something, but now you've got them, they, I think it's... <laughs> you are well, getting well, people... I won my first three bodybuilding shows when I was 13, so... <coughs> you're getting people, you've got a men's physique, and you've got a bodybuilder. In, when, when I first started bodybuilding, you had to get to that men's physique stage without gear. We took gear after that to get to that freaky stage. That mm, so it was like a platform. Yeah, well, it? I yeah. think everyone has been a men's physique. We all had to be a men's physique mm. in that stage. What well, the problem is now, you're getting the lads that are taking the gear to get to that men's physique stage. Do you see what I mean? They're doing nothing healthy, nothing natural. Yeah. Even getting girls taking gear to get to the bikini stage. That's the take, right? They take more gear than yeah. the bodybuilders. I know, fucking some bikini girls that yeah, take yeah, more yeah, gear yeah, than so fucking that's bodybuilders. What it like. It's almost that's what like I they get. just come along and said, listen, okay, we know you can't be a bodybuilder, so we'll make a class for you. And it's like, okay, yeah. now, you got a nice upper body, but you can't, you've got shitty legs, you need to have a class for money. you. We'll give you a board short class. So it seems like they're putting classes around people because of their genetics. They can't. 
But the more the more classes, the more people compete, the more yeah, memberships they're the paying, exactly. the more people they bring family buys tickets. It's just fucking. It's so a, just a business, isn't it? The sports being lost all down yeah, to money. Just be like yeah. have a bodybuilding show. If you want to have all those other things, make it like the Hawaiian tropics when they have those girls on stage in bikini yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Or isn't and that what beauty pageants are for? That's what it is, isn't it? Men's fashion yeah. show. Or but then you get somebody like Simon who has a genuine love for the sport. You put your own money in it, and when you try to make it bodybuilding, you end up fucking losing a lot of money. Yeah. You didn't even put your fucking name to it, so people. Don't even know what you did for the. I don't know. Cool. Of course, yeah. you have to now. <coughs> <coughs> my, my idea was always do it over two days. You just mm -hmm. do Saturday show would be all your beauty pageant, yep. bikini body boys, whatever, yeah. and Sunday bodybuilding. Yeah. Mm. You yeah. But you bring in two two different crowds. the show long. Yeah, You're still going shit, mate. The judges and promoters still fucking greedy. You watch some greedy. of those big shows. How they judge it, I don't know because you watch some of them. The lineups, they barely get oh, one man. call out, mm -hmm. and that's it. See you later. And they paid all that money to I enter I the show. That's why the other class did the show. Where some people ain't even had enough time to do their routine and shit, and they practiced it. It's bullshit. I was talking about this other day, and I did the the Arnold Classic in Madrid. Well, you, the you, you, nearly turn, kicked out of. you nearly got us kicked no, out because you because again you kicked off with your void rage and caused more problems. You had to apologise that time, didn't you? <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> shoot yourself. But but what was it like though? My category, like you, I spent like Five hours two, delay, three wasn't grand, two thousand pound prepping for this show, and yeah. fourteen weeks of your life gone. You've killed yourself. Flown over to Madrid. You get turned up. You go on stage. I wasn't on stage for even a minute. Yeah, you did four court turns. You had a five-hour delay as well, there's, don't remember. There's 35 people on stage. The judges went... Okay, off you go. There's no way they could have judged that shit. Where we got told when we were in the canteen that we had a 45-minute... Yeah. Um, Sean O'Reilly told us. So we were fucking put eating fucking sugars. We were pumping up. We were all ready. And then all of a sudden, one of the judges come out and said, we're pumping up for us. Well, I want in fucking 45 minutes. Mm. No, you're not. There's a five-hour delay. We're like, what? I nearly missed my category because they, they told me it's like two hours and then we're chilling out and they're like, you're on stage now. What do you mean? By the yeah. time I got my clothes off, they nearly didn't I let me in. I don't have friends that when they've even had their own. too many classes. Great, they do that. Mm. My friend paid all the money, your friends go to watch and then they think, oh, we're going to pay for the night show. You don't even get to go on stage. The fans <coughs> are there. Too bad, you should have seen the pre-judging. Like you said, yeah. five minutes, if that. 220 euros we had to pay in cash each just to enter. Yeah. The Australian one was like, that was the thing that ended up being four or five hundred because you had to buy you know, be a member, you had to pay the entry fee. Yeah. Of course, Protein was the main sponsor of the show. Everyone had to use Protein, use anything yeah. else you were banned. And then Bill Tierney and them come up with the IFBB International Passport on the day of the show. So every to peddler had, had, to pay had, cash. had to pay cash. Mm. Yeah. $40. dollars dollars Where did you think that cash went? <coughs> oh, of course they Why couldn't you write a check? <laughs> yeah. And as I was paying all of that, and we were, remember we had them tables, and we were signing in, paying the money, and going table to table. There was a table at the end with some Fruit of the Loom t-shirts with a picture of Arnold. I was picking up thinking, yeah, you thinking that was a freebie, and it was on like 30 euros. I was like, what oh, yeah. money? Even us pros at the Arnold Classic didn't get free t-shirts. Fucking hell, I yeah. thought it was like a you know, courtesy it's thing. Could be worse, it could be like the Grand Prix that yeah, you put on, didn't you? And I, I competed, and... Um, I did well in that show, didn't I? I almost got on stage. What, what happened, happened there? Well, okay, so we had a registration like 7.30 in the morning. We had this meeting. Okay, don't go anywhere, don't go far away, because the show starts at 10. It's now about 8 o'clock. I've got two hours. My hotel's at the bottom end of the XL. All my stuff's in the hotel. Half a mile, half a mile. Eh? So, gone to my hotel. I thought, chill out. If I get to the show at 10 o'clock when it starts, I'm going to probably be on about 11, half 11. Cool. 10 o'clock comes. Okay, make my way back. He rings me. Where the fuck are you getting on stage? What do you mean? The show starts? No, you're on now? <laughs> it's I classic on stage. Half a fucking mile. <laughs> Got to close got off. To I got I to the show. I was like, and they they just gone on. They just lined up, yeah. got there, got my clothes off. And Bill was like, no. I said, well, they're on stage now. No, be late. We'll let you on. No, but the, the, the so. didn't like one. You know what One quarter, sure. and, and they turned up. I said, I said, let him on, to Bill. I guess no, it's too late. I said, come on, let him on, and he was having none yeah. of it. Well, I'm I'm fortunate to have a good few people around me, so. <laughs> What do you think about um, the, the, in the, the industry? Majority of people in the industry are very yeah, two-faced. Not yeah. like it used to be. Like when I trained at World Gym, 
you still had the good old people there like Arnold, Lou Ferrigno, Eddie Giuliani, all the people from the Pumping Iron era mm -hmm. were still there. They're still great friends. They all still got along. There's none of this bullshit talking. Everyone's just there to train. If someone needed help, they'd help someone. If you wanted advice, they'd give advice. But now, you walk into the gym now, you just get stares like... <coughs> You think he is? Look at him. It's like laying enemies. Minute. That's the reason it's why like, they wait a minute, like, wait a minute. You're in the gym. You want to become a bodybuilder. You want to be a pro bodybuilder. Yet you look at me and you hate me for being where you want to get to. I don't understand that. Back in when I was young, if you seen a bigger guy in the gym, you'd go and ask him, how do you get big arms? And they'd gladly help you or they'd come and support you at a contest and stuff. Now, but now it's just so much... That's, what, that's why they will never Peter. recreate pumping iron again with any generation iron because it's just full of the fucking idiots that happen to lie. When you watch the pumping iron... It was done on that much of a short budget. It was done that fucking much. It was real though, wasn't it? It was real. You had really? these people. There was Arnold and and Frank. Um, ah. Well, back then too, it's like there was none of this internet stuff. So it was like they're being themselves. Mm. You watch Generation I now. You watch mm. some of these other ones that go on. Or it's off the camera. Yeah. These pro bodybuilders that put out a tape. They're not being themselves. Nah. It's like let me act this way so people might like me. Let me try and do this and then get this. Like, if you just be yourself, people are going to like you, love you, or hate mm. you, so just be yourself. There was Arnold, no, Franco, there was Arnold and Louis that would just fucking, they, they would wind each other up and get them to each other to that point. But if Louis was in the corner and needed a spot, fucking Arnold would push yeah. him to failure. Fucking, if he needed something for a time, yeah, backstage it, it, it was good. But then, you know, he would try and fuck up his diet. He would, because he knew it was his competition. He would try and head fuck him. But it was, it was genuine. And that sort of, it, it's a bit like, you know, I could be a bit of a hypocrite because my, my career is built on social media. But I feel like I'm lucky enough to be able to say that well, I started bodybuilding, we started bodybuilding before it actually fucking existed. Yeah, so like you said, in order to get the big arms in the gym, you had to walk in there without your headphones on and sort of integrate. You had to make friends. You had to have the piss taken out of you. You had to be course, that lad, yeah. you know what I mean? And it, it was character And no one took it personal back then. It was just no, fun and game. Man. You dig it each other It was like Back then, I, I would never dreamed of competing. <coughs> somebody came to me and said, I think you've got genetics. Yeah. I think you could do well. And there's only the very small few people that, that would never would do in the gyms unless you yeah. genuinely fucking did. That's mm -hmm. the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because you would just get ripped apart. There was always that old guy that was about 100 years old that's just fucking strong. There was always like this. that fucking big fat builder <laughs> guy that was that. Like Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but you always had them different characters and it was one of them times where you could genuinely forget about this fucking Generation Iron shit and the podcast or, or whatever it is now. You could put a camera in that gym in them days and you would have a series just from fucking characters. I mean the stories you've told me in, in uh, Gold's Gym when he banned Louie for fucking shouting and you know there was no one that was allowed to speak in that fucking gym and you know they're the fucking stories and if you had a camera on there but unfortunately it's not like that anymore and they're never going to recreate that because that's now gone and um and i don't think it's ever going to be the same it's all this fake industry now mm. isn't it? The, the, yeah. if i make this fake life and make myself like everything's not for social a millionaire it's lifestyle yeah, like people want. the gyms we trained in wouldn't even be allowed to be open right now because of health and safety it's like go to, go to the gym <laughs> and go to the gym and train and fucking the go to the gyms now even the women when they go to the gym they're more interested in taking a picture of themselves halfway through their workout or training or video on it putting it online and seeing how many likes they get it's like no one gives a shit most people turn and then now look what they do I mean we, we, we've done it but you've got the Instagram it's that fucking um, strong with filters and stuff they're not how they actually are most people bring a fucking camera crew to the gym yeah. when they train ah, the, you know back in the day I'd, I'd take a, a belt some lifting straps and you see strong guys take some chalk that's your kit not yeah. a fucking <laughs> tripod and a camera crew <laughs> it's like unless you're a heart surgeon on call if you can't go an hour or two without your phone in a fucking gym you've got a problem it's like yeah. well, it's okay if you get ready for a show after you train <coughs> you snap a few, a few shots in the yeah. change room whatever take some photos of your progression then but yeah. don't every set take yeah. Yeah. even the training yeah, videos now that we do we end up fucking training for what about 45 minutes an hour an hour and a half and it's yeah. at the end that's when I go back and do one of the exercises again uh, and, and I, I might, I might film a last set if it's, if I'm yeah. it's always pushing the hard end. and yeah. I'm going to fail it's always something half end. impressive mm -hmm. I'm going to film every fucking rep and set and every warm up who wants to see that shit film out how my fucking bum hole looks in the camera <laughs> exactly <laughs> or holding that protein shake up against your boobies sticking uh, out yeah, the yeah. Yeah. protein it's, drink it's just <laughs> out of hand and it's well, it's got out of hand and it's not like how it used to be anymore unfortunately no, you had the magazines come once a month that generally we used to look forward to the behind. magazines 
I used to look forward to it. I remember when the beef, uh, the beef magazine first came out, you, you would want to um, just see your name in the lineup. That was like your little claim to fame. Yeah, I'm there, in the main That's my name. 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 <laughs> and Alex always used to fucking spell it wrong. The fucking dyslexic. <laughs> yeah. But you would be that happy, and then that 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 magazine would be pride of place in the gym for a whole month yeah. until the next one come out, wouldn't it? That's how it used to be. <clears throat> but unfortunately, it's not that like that anymore. It's um, it's been sort of taken over by fake stuff. Mm. And uh, those days are gone. How many likes you got on Instagram? And if you don't have over a hundred thousand people that follow you, you're nobody. Doesn't matter what you want or what you've achieved. And you can buy your likes now. And most of them do. You can buy your so-called. Sadly, so -called sadly phone. see some of these YouTubers have huge likes now. I don't even know who they are, but the people know who they are. Then they're just people that sit there and talk on YouTube and they become these internet famous type people. It's like you know, that's the sad thing, you know, um, with, you've got fucking people that are queuing up, well, fucking nearly two hours just to speak to me because they like well, certain things that I've said or standing up to things, uh, which is good in a way, but then when you've got people that I class as fucking true legends, Samir Banu, he had a, a fucking decent queue too, but you're getting the young people that don't even know who he is. Whereas, you know, when you're growing up with the fucking Flex magazines and that, you, you wanted to know this. I know, like I said, it's a different you, generation, okay, though, isn't it? When I first got my 1990s Flex magazine, I saw fucking Lee Priest dressed up as Superman. I saw Samir Banut with his top off on a fucking horse. I saw who did it Them in bungarees. Stuck together now, haven't they? <laughs> Paul did it. I don't know if you saw that photo. I've got it, I've got that. With Paul did it's um, <laughs> bungarees and the fucking traps. That, that, yeah. <laughs> They're just humongous. <laughs> and, it, and all you wanted to do was look like a freak. Yeah. That's all you wanted to do was look like a freak. And now, the freaky look is sort of gone to a cool, fucking it? disgusting look. Mm. I was sat in a service station having a KFC with Samir Banu and these tight t-shirt wearing dickheads. I called them the other weekend warriors, walked in, and they sat down, they were just fucking staring at me. You know when they're just trying to be like, a big guy recognises another big guy and they have that chest off. And, and Samir's just sitting there just eating his food. And Samir looked at me and he said, you know the sad thing is, he said, not one of them have a clue who I am, do they? I went, nah. No, you're looking, you're yeah. right next to a guy who at one point in his life had the, the best, best in the physique world. in the world. He was the best bodybuilder in the world. How many and you have no fucking idea who you're sitting next how to. How many people have won the Olympics? <coughs> you know, we, we can tell you what colour pants he had on <laughs> 13 here. people won the Olympia. 13 of these people in it's the whole world. And he's one of them. And he's one of them. Yeah. Ever. Not, not now, ever lived. But I think that just shows you as a person. I mean, we, we were fucking, we, we end up taking the piss out of Samir because he, he, he does sometimes mishears what we say or whatever. But I'll tell you something, I can sit for an hour just listening Listen to, him to stories, yeah. himself with stories of Arnold, Sylvester Stallone, fucking the fights he had in Gold's Gym, the, um, the firehouse. Because you're just sitting there like, mm -hmm. wow. I mean, mate, he even said, let me show you something cool, Aaron. I went, what's that? He got on his contacts, he's got Arnold Schwarzenegger, home. Who the fuck has that? Just that. Just looking at that. I was just like, that's like the coolest thing I've ever seen. And, but I, it's like I could sit in my nan's living room and chat to her for fucking hours. But these, these people, it's just the stories because it's what you're into, isn't it? Yeah. And I think these lads, they would just get bored in seminars now, um, listening to that. Oh, yeah. Know. We have you seminars you now. Day. Sometimes seminars, you can get someone great. <coughs> yeah. Numbers get smaller and smaller because everyone there, I don't need to go. I, I just go on the internet. Yeah, yeah. I know everything. It's like mm. back in the days when I go to seminars when I was young, it was packed. Mm. Wherever it was, it'd be packed. Whether a surgeon you bray or when Bertle Fox come over or Edward Cullet come to Australia back in the day, Lee Haney. I mean, the place was packed just to listen to him talk and yeah. see him guest pose and stuff like that. Now it's like, nah, who cares, you know. Uh, I remember yeah, I had Brent Tour in my gym what, three or four years ago. I had four people turn up. Yeah. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Flex Wheeler, so they only did that one. Flex Wheeler. Flex Wheeler, yeah. yeah. There was a few people sat around, I was all listening, and like, I, c I can listen to Flex's story, yeah. he's mm -hmm. awesome. There was a few bo people by the counter. Do you know who it was? Oh, it looks so fucking boring now. <laughs> can you just sit there and listen to that? There's no interest in the sport. Yeah, well, there's no interest, there's no fucking respect either. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. You've got to respect them people in the sport at that game. That fucking, they're ahead of their time, every single one of them. Regardless what my personal opinions are of fucking Dorian, that's his that's personal, but you can never fucking say that he didn't have the best physique in the he fucking was, world. He was uh, fucking uh, incredible. And, and these people, he was yeah. incredible. These people have been there and done it. They know how to <coughs> People won't listen to them. I've told people stuff and they just go online and go, but I don't get that. be like me. Or in the race a car, and me going to Healy, go see Michael Schumacher. I'm sure he'd be the best coach ever to teach me how to race a car. I go, ah, fuck him. I'd go see fucking Bob down the road who does donuts in the thing. I'd be like, he'll show me what to do. That's sadly how it is. They won't come and see these pros who have been there and done it, get the pure information on the mistakes they've made and how they've done this and done that. Yeah. They'll just go online and goes, 
Oh, PT such and such. He said I should do this. Okay, I'll do that. See, I've like, always been who's somebody. Dumb, who's dumb. PT such and such? It's like, I've always been he somebody. What's he achieved where he's got yeah. any results? These exactly. best guys in the world here. I've always been somebody that respects people for something that I can't do. If I can't do something, then fucking who am I to say that it's shit if he can do something that I can't do? But I'm sorry, mate. I won't even fucking mention people's names. When you've got people like fucking Nathan Harmon that are charging a fucking pound a minute to PT people, the guy's never been in the gym. He's never been a bodybuilder in his life. He's prepping pro bodybuilders and people are going to him and you've got somebody like Samir Banu who invented the fucking Christmas tree you know he's one of the best posers in the world he fucking took the Olympia and you've got somebody like Lee Priest you know and it's like I, I don't understand I don't understand I wouldn't go to a bodybuilder if I wanted to learn how to box you go to a boxer so I don't it's get it too, I see a lot of these PTs I'm sure it's like even in Australia you get these so called internet PTs where they'll have all these clients getting them ready for shows and that PT will sometimes compete He's got a coach for himself. I'm like, mm. wait a minute, yeah. how can you, you need a piece you get yeah. all these people ready for a show, but you can't get himself ready? Yeah. I'm like, that's <coughs> it's, it's the sport it's won't change until the athletes change. Successful mm. people are, are not lucky they're, they're that way because of the things they do on a daily basis to build that success. Mm. So if you want to be successful, all you've got to do is mimic what the successful people are doing. Not, like you said, fucking yeah, like I said, pop down the seminars The first time I remember we were talking about the drugs, and I told them a small amount I use. Some called me a liar when I said I only take 400 a test and this and that. It's like more like 4,000. One kid there was taking like four to 5,000. like, where do you put that? I said, where do you get that from? He's like, online. I said, okay, well, I'm a pro that's been there and done it. Paul Dillette, when he split from his wife, he stayed with me for eight months. I saw what he took every day, getting ready for the night Olympia. It wasn't a quarter of what people said, but when I tell him that, are you just lying for him? Yeah. I'm not lying for him. I'm trying to tell you the safe way to do it. I'm trying to tell you to save your money. You don't need all these drugs. I've got a guy ready for the NABA Worlds. He's done it a few times before, never placed too well. I got him ready. I did his diet and training. He writes me back. Lee, what about the drugs? I said, well, I don't know about it. Here's what I did. Same thing. You're fucking with me. I said, no. I said, trust me. I said, you trust me with the diet, training, trust me with this. So he did. He used a smaller amount. He went over. He won the junior world. He goes, thanks, Lee. It's the best I've ever looked and the best I've ever felt. Yeah. And on top of it, he was using probably four times the amount that I gave him. I said, you don't need these fucking large yeah, amounts. That's why I tell people, man. if you're taking a thousand of this now at 500, so total, you're taking 3,000 milligrams a week. Or I said, come off it for a couple of months. Okay, if you don't believe me, come off for a couple of months. Get it in your head that you don't need that amount. Start again with a half that, a quarter of that. Train hard, eat and do it. I said, you're going to make the same fucking gains. Yeah. I said, the only one who's benefit is the guy you're buying the shit off because you're buying yeah. so much. He's getting rich. But I said, but in their mind, because they've read it online, I see these programs, I'm sure you've all seen them. This is a pro's fucking cycle. I'm looking at that going, what the fuck? You're in your living room and you fucking took well, it. Well, I've like, had like, people tell me what I'm taking. Yeah, what you're taking. Like, they're telling you. Well, I've done that. this morning when I was doing well, it. I've done the seminars. This is what I use. Well, I heard you take this. I say, oh, I'm telling you. Well, I heard you. Look, I'm the guy rejected. I know what I've put in my body. Did you watch me? I think it, 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 it comes down to this. We're all saying, what, you know, why do people go to these fucking so-called gurus instead of actually going to the legends that do know what they're talking about? But at the same time, the people that do they know don't what they're talking about, when you come to us and you want fucking advice, we tell you you don't listen anyway and you go and do your own thing so the, the legends people like yourself end up getting frustrated with them and can't be fucking bothered they, they don't like what you're telling them <coughs> they're expecting this magic People pillow can't handle the truth well, when I got when I did can't the handle the ready, truth when I got that ready guy ready for the world what he wanted there was a, he had a friend in western Australia who wanted me to get him get ready for another show so I did the same thing gave him a diet program yes, he wrote me back fucking furious he said fucking eat I'm like what do you mean I said he goes I thought it would have been more detailed. I said, with what? He goes, the diet and the drugs. There should be more drugs than that and this. I said, that's just it. It's basic. Do that. He's like, oh, you're helping Jake. You like him more than me. I said, look, I'm helping you both equally the same. I said, I don't give a care who wins or loses. I just goes, he goes, you know what? I'll do it myself. I said, look, I'm quite happy to give you fucking money back. I don't give a shit. He's like, no, keep the money. I'll do it myself. It didn't end up placing. But that's how I really got because it was so basic what I gave him. He thought there was going to be this big fucking secret that I knew because I've been in the States for 18 years in the pro ranks. He's going to get this new fang dangled. He's mainly upset about the drug protocol I gave him that no, no. it wasn't enough. Mm. It wasn't more scientific. It's just very basic stuff for everybody. A bit of test, a bit of decker, a bit of, you know, master on tours. You know, it's just like so basic. He's like, that's it, that's it. If it works, you know what I mean? would say too much stand for far too long. They yeah. don't come off. Then obviously your body builds an immunity to it. 
then you got to see you're taking oh. 500 milligram a week. You could take Once more, more. On yeah. that for six weeks or whatever, you got to take a thousand milligram a week to just to get the same result. Yeah. Then well, I they get, carry well, I on. Figured it. I'd use it mainly for that 16 weeks I was dieting, and then if I didn't have another show for eight months later, I'd be off for five months. Well, I wouldn't yeah. start again until 12 weeks out. And then I bet you people say, "Aren't you on your own?" I said, "No, I'm not on your own. When I'm off it, I just go eat like a fucking pig and train hard." Because I've never had that mentality. I've trained with guys where I'm like, "Let's go heavy today." I can't go heavy. Why not? I'm not on anything. I'm like. But if you think that way, you're never going to go mm. anywhere, you know. But that's what they need. They need that. I've got to be on it now. I've seen so many guys too that they might come to the gym and fuck around. They don't eat properly. They don't rest. They party on weekends. As soon as they get on the gear, they get on the gear. Yeah. All of a sudden, they're eating six meals <laughs> yeah, a day. Yeah, yeah. They're training properly. They're resting. They're like, yeah. fuck these gears. <laughs> 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 you know what? If you just had to start eating properly, taking your training seriously, you would have probably made the same fucking gains and results mm. without the gear. And then when they come off it, they go back to whatever they're doing. What the gains? They're like, oh, I'm off the gear. I was like. <laughs> They're just yeah. up and down, up and down, but you can't tell them. Uh, I suppose when you have those long breaks as well, when you do go on it, you respond so quickly. Yeah. You don't need a lot of gear, that's what I try and tell them. You Half the amount. Lot. I've got friends that never well. come off, I know friends in Australia, never competed. Six years, seven years straight, never come off it. What do you think, what do you think about cruising? Yeah, I've never done that. I've just come off totally. Mm. Even like, I never... But even even at your week. age, because we're about the same age, you yeah. don't believe in like doing a 200 milligram test a week? No, I uh, said Samir does, doesn't he? he stays yeah. Just for like general yeah, well-being. If you need, I do. But no, there might be points because of my shoulder injury and stuff. I haven't really been in there because I haven't been able to train properly. I've just been a uh, fuck it because I can't train properly mm. anyway. So why be on anything? So maybe a know, every two weeks. Yeah, maybe if you got like I said, if, when you get in your mid forties and stuff, yeah. just for your well-being. Just for like sex drive libido. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine, but I think like two to four hundred is fine. Yeah, mm. every week or two, but. Yeah, that's fine. You don't, you don't bother with that. No, but with young kids, you know, say they want to cruise or come off, and they just keep on these high amounts year after year after year. It's ridiculous. But, yeah, like, so that PCT type stuff for elderly men who just want to train and feel good, because that's really all it's about. Because I had friends in America that were depressed and, you know, Low almost suicidal. And, yeah, they're taking Prozac and all these other stuff, mm. which is worse on their head. Mm. As soon as they came off that and got along with the test. test, they felt great again. Mm. But yet, I don't know, it was like, yeah, but in Australia... Women can go get estrogen. Women can get any hormone for there when they go through menopause. But if you're a man and you want to try to get a little bit of test, you've got to jump through hips. You've got to go to endocrinologists. You've got to go to special doctors just to get a little bit of test to make you feel good. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, yeah if you do want to um, um, advance on your physique and you do want great products, then go to mentalhamster.com. Oh. Stop now. 